Vacation ruined by screaming child. Should not have been a place where children are allowed at all. Hey everyone, welcome back to Child Free for Life. Don't forget to subscribe to Be a For Lifer. Another vacation impacted or mildly ruined by children post for you awesome people who understand. I paid thousands of dollars and ran the gauntlet of several COVID tests, visas, declarations, paperwork, flew across the world to a remote island to stay in an absolutely beautiful beachfront retreat. No resort. Max six villas. Communal cooking area. Outdoor relaxation places on the beach. So vibed out. Also okay about hallucinogens and their usage in the confines of this area. Edit this was allowed but not promoted or a big part of the situation. More of a bring your own and don't disturb anyone while you're at it. The entire point was relaxation. The wind in the tropical trees, the sound of the waves, the beautiful ornately carved wood and detail in every part of this retreat, massages on rooftop cabanas, yoga on the beach, just plain amazing. Four days before I'm set to leave, a young family rolls up and has an absolutely squealing, screaming one-year-old. Guys, it was like it was in pain 24 hours a day. Bonus, their villa was right next to mine. The constant screams could be heard half a mile in all directions. This mom or dad would keep this absolutely just hysterical small child right in the common area of the small commune, screaming bloody murder for the entire time. This is not a place for kids. People are allowed to do psychedelics and not disturb others with it. Smoking grass, writing books, me, yoga, meditation, body treatments. I cannot believe the kid was even allowed. I thought of ways to ask the parents to take the child to their quarters so that they could scream in the confines of four walls. Maybe spare the six or so of us, others, the complete ruin of our every waking moment. Every set of words I came up with would not do. I couldn't help but sound confrontational. In the end, all I could think was to go and scream right next to the child and wait to be asked to stop or move to a more private location. I obviously didn't do that, but dang. The parents looked like they hated their lives. In paradise, being assaulted by this child. The woman was also currently big pregnant with another one. I cannot believe I traveled across the world to an exclusive private relaxation situation and this happened. I will be asking if kids are allowed forevermore. I'll bet after that, they won't be allowed at this place again. Rant end. Did you bring it up with the management of the place? Yes, I did. They gave me the same sob story the parents gave them as to why they had booked and just had to disturb us all. Displacement, moving, and all that. The thing is, you don't go to a place like this in your traumatic move. This was a very specific place. In the end, I asked them to blast soothing music over the compound. They did. It didn't help. You know, if it was me, I'd ask to be moved to another villa as far away from that family as possible. I'd find that if I tell them what kind of resolution I want, it saves them the trouble of confronting the offending party, which no one likes. Plus, I might get some freebies thrown in. I'm on a basically opposite type of trip, backpacking through the Ukraine right now. There are kids in hostels here. I was shocked. Hostels are literally always at least 16 plus. What kind of cheap moron books a dorm for their four member family that they have to share with other people? How do you feel safe letting your kids live in the same room as total strangers? I'm still really upset about it and all I can do is leave a review. Should have stayed home. If you aren't from Europe, I can imagine that's quite strange, but it's actually really common for parents to take kids on the typical interrail venture that a lot of Europeans do over the summer. I've done it twice with friends and unless you specifically pick an adults only hostel, there are usually quite a few families. Hostels have a big grab for being about meeting people and shared common areas, etc. So a lot of parents think it's a good place to meet people of all cultures and to see all different places in Europe and you can usually pack in a fair few countries in the span of a couple weeks. Plus, hostels are cheaper too. It's just a different, more relaxed parenting vibe in some European countries than the US or even the UK. I lived in Spain for a while and at first quite surprised by how laid back parents were about having kids out at restaurants at 10 to 11 p.m. But their attitude is they expect kids to be part of their lifestyle. They don't change it up much when kids come along. The kids fit into their life, not the other way around, if that makes sense. It's definitely very different, but I can see the pros and cons. You don't get as many helicopter parents and kids are generally better behaved because they're expected to from a younger age. 
I am from Europe and have traveled around pretty much all of it, except for the northern part, so I guess I just got very lucky. I was always under the impression that most hostels don't host kids, and I've never quite seen it this much. Also, Ukrainian kids are the worst horribly behaved brats that I've ever encountered. Love the country and the people, but the way they raise their kids is they just kind of let them run around and be as loud as they want. There also seems to be a COVID baby boom here, so whenever you go outside, you see three babies a minute. I'm looking forward to going back to my home country where natality rates are so low. It's actually bad for the economy, lol. I guess it just depends on the time of year too. We went in the school summer holidays because we were at uni at the time. It was usually your bigger, more famous hostels too in big cities like Berlin and Paris where there was more, and less so in Prague and Budapest where it was mostly partiers. I actually really like how the Spanish raised their children. You see kids in restaurants just sitting, chatting while their families had dinner and long leisurely coffees and stuff, and the kids just quietly socialized while the adults did the same. You don't really get that here, but I suppose it's a catch-22. You need to be taking them out and about from a young age so that they get used to the etiquette or social skills needed. But before they get to that stage, they might be paying in the behind toddlers, which would actually take people off. But generally speaking, they seem to have hit a good balance. OP, I don't give a crap. I'ma ask, is it possible for you to take the kid into a private room? It's hard to relax when he's screaming. Either they say yes or no, and if it's no, you gotta talk to the manager. Uh, yeah, I feel you. I got that far into my thought process, then I remembered we would see them a large amount of every day, cook meals in the same kitchen, walk past them constantly. I didn't want to possibly start a fight with these rundown parents, because that would have been an everyday bad vibe we both felt instead of just me. And that would have made me feel more uncomfortable if they reacted badly, which I can bet they would have. No children should ever be allowed in pro-hallucinogens environment. Certain grass foods and similar items can be deadly if accidentally ingested. This isn't just inappropriate and rude, but also a health hazard or lawsuit waiting to happen. OP, I would demand a full refund from the resort. You paid tons of money for an exclusive, private experience, and it was turned into a Chuck E. Cheese for several days. If the resort owners refuse to refund, you can also issue a chargeback assuming you paid by credit card to get the money back. This can lower your credit score somewhat, however. I consider leaving some reviews online as well so other people don't get trapped like you did. And yes, I know this sounds a bit like Karen advice, but sometimes raising a fuss is actually important. Normally, I would agree. In this situation, I think the host was tricked and not told about the child. Once it was there, we were in a place that making them leave would have had them stranded in a different country with no internet, nowhere to go instead, no phone signal, and would have been just a very cruel thing to do. I do understand why it was handled the way it was. It sucks that it happened that way, but I don't want to punish them for something out of their control. If you were in a more populated area, my thoughts would have been different. I think I just got to chalk this one up to a learning experience and a fun cautionary tale. I understand everyone deserves a vacation. What I don't understand is why you would choose to go on vacation with what is clearly the omen. Either leave the kid with family while you're gone or don't go. What is the point of spending thousands on a vacation if you're just gonna listen to your stupid kid scream the entire time? Do that at home and spare the rest of us for freak's sake. Yes, this. You just don't get to vacation the same when you have kids. They choose that. Totally agree, the kid was rightfully unhappy. An hours long flight, three to four hour drive on the worst roads I've ever seen from any airport, no air conditioning in any villa, 95 degrees. They should have known it would have been screaming and really unhappy about being a part of any of it. Oh.